Hello, I'm Pam Burgess, uh, Clinical Manager at Wake Forest Baptist Health in the Adult Echo Lab. Today, I will be talking with you on IV insertion by a sonographer. Our first slide here um, in, enhances the um, ASC guidelines on contrast agents. Um, I would recommend this article, the standard guideline for you um, as a reference. It um, goes over a lot of the things that we're going to be talking about today, which is IV insertion, contrast administration by a sonographer. So this would be an outstanding reference for you. Our next slide is um, how can we improve utilization of contrast? And, and this is something that we often see where contrast is not being utilized enough. So we've identified the number one barrier is contrast administration of the agent. The um, most efficient way of doing this is that the sonographer makes the call for the contrast agent and they're covered by a standing order policy. The uh, sonographer would check the O2 saturation, would also administer the IV, and also administer the contrast agent. This would be done uh, with education being provided from the, the medical center and also annual competencies that should be occurring in, in both of these areas. Contrast challenges uh, continue for the sonographers. Um, incorporation of contrast into the exam um, the, the biggest challenges that we see in this area is the cost of the contrast agent, the comfort level of utilizing contrast, or the learning curve with utilizing contrast, and most of all, probably uh, the increased procedure time and staffing limitations. And we'll talk about um, each of these and, and ways that this can be done more efficiently. The number one challenge for us, even though we've been utilizing contrast in the echo lab for many years now, it is still the IV insertion and the contrast administration. It's more or less who can administer the IV and the contrast. And, and how, you know, if you're going to go with a sonographer doing this um, administering of the IV and the contrast, how do you gain approval for it? And how do you get the sonographers trained in both these areas? What impacts contrast image quality? Um, the difficulty of the unenhanced image quality is, is probably the, the biggest thing that we as sonographers encounter. The, the very, very difficult images are going to be the not so pretty contrast pictures. Other things that can impact that is IV placement. So we want to ensure that we get a good IV placed in an, an ideal location. And we'll talk a little bit about that in just a minute. Also, the injection technique can um, affect the contrast image quality, as well as equipment settings too. With IV placement, we want to do this in the non-dependent right arm if possible. We don't want the patient laying on their left arm as most sonographers do. We roll the patient up on their left side and have the left arm bent. So ideally, we would want to place the IV in the right arm. We want it as proximal as possible. Even if we go in the antecubital area, that's going to be okay with these because uh, we're usually placing the IV and then removing it almost as soon as we're finished with the exam. Injection site needs to be as close to the hub as possible. So right up next to um, the IV site, not where the contrast has to travel through um, tubing, uh, the IV tubing, where we can get adherence of the contrast agent. Do we ever utilize existing IVs? We absolutely do. We try and save the patient sticks if, it, if at all possible. The sonographer must have the RN shut off any meds. So sonographers, and at least in our medical center, are not approved to turn off any meds or turn any meds back on. That should be a nursing call that's made. Sonographers should never inject into a central line or a PIC line. And we also ensure that there's an injection site 
close to the hub. So we utilize existing staff and that's our sonographers. We um, have all of our sonographers here at Wake that um, start the IV. This has increased efficiency in our lab. It reduces wait time for a nurse and it improves patient satisfaction because they're not having to lay there and wait, you know, 15, 20 minutes for a nurse to arrive or having to go to a different area to have an IV placed. Uh, we do an IV start class with our sonographers, and after that, they um, move on to a saline contrast class and also an LV opacification contrast class. Benefits of sonographers administering IVs are numerous. St our staff is more efficient. Our staff's more marketable. Uh, it decreases patient wait times and, again, improves patient satisfaction because of that. It also has improved morale among staff because they feel like they're more of the team and, and they can get added responsibilities and things that um, impact their um, throughput in the lab. So it also promotes teamwork among our staff. Mm -hmm. Okay, injection technique is also important. We um, require good communication among the staff by looking at the function of the left ventricle because that's gonna impact our injection and also timing. Timing can be extremely important, especially with stress echo. Um, proper technique, uh, we wanna you know, make sure we have the I ideal IV site. Also a proper dose and speed of injection, and a flush, and dilution. We push the contrast agent to endure good filling all the way to the apex. Our proper injection technique is that we inject about 0.3 to 0.5 ml um, of contrast, depending on the patient, and when I say on the patient, we look at the size of the patient, the difficulty of the images, how the patient's heart's functioning, and how we're, or if we're diluting the contrast agent. We do a slow saline flush, and that follows every um, administration of contrast. And we usually do about three ml over 10 seconds, being very careful not to inject too quickly, which would cause attenuation. If the ejection fraction is low and or there's an apical wall motion abnormality, a more vigorous flush or additional contrast may be needed to get complete filling of the apex. If the patient's large, you may need to inject more contrast to get that complete filling. Next, what I'm going to show you um, is our contrast administration by sonographer policy and procedure. And this just goes over our requirements here at this hospital um, that for a sonographer to do this. And within this policy, you'll note that the sonographer must be a credentialed sonographer in adult cardiac. They have uh, successfully completed the cardiac ultrasound and stress testing IV therapy class and also the contrast administration class. And we do these for all agents that we inject and for saline contrast as well with this. So our nurses um, develop this program here and they teach the um, IV start class and the contrast administration. And we also um, maintain these with um, an annual competency that's done every year. We also have a contrast standing order policy, and this allows the sonographer to administer the contrast without having to go get a physician order. So we consider it part of the test. And so any patient that comes for a transthoracic echo or a stress echo is subject to um, 
this contrast standing order. What, what this standing order um, tells us is the times and the pathologies and everything that where we can utilize contrast, which is listed right here. And these are things, you know, where we just can't see two or more continuous segments of the LV, or we're trying to rule out a thrombus or a mass or an emboli, or we just want to enhance the Doppler signal. All of these um, things are within our contrast standing order policy. Also here, you would note um, the times that we give the contrast agent also very much parallel the ASC guidelines for utilizing contrast. We used to use a contrast worksheet before we um, had computerized documentation of, of contrast. So I wanted to just show you what this includes. We document the physician approving, and that's usually our reading doctor. Uh, we document um, the contrast agent, the lot number, the dosage we give them, whether we're starting an IV or using an, an existing IV. We document the their blood pressure, their O2 saturations, things like that. And then we also kind of rate our contrast agent as well for future documentation. So this is all kept within the patient's medical record. So hopefully today I've given you some ideas of, of how you can make your lab more efficient with the utilization of contrast and overcome the barriers of contrast, which are you know, mainly having an IV present and who's going to administer the contrast agent. I would encourage you to work with your nursing department at your medical center to um, develop the classes so this can be done in your medical center as well.